What's up YouTube, this is Tube Digger. In this video, I'm gonna break down the track that I made recently, which was created from one single snare from the Amen break. You might have seen that video that I uploaded a few days before this one. If you haven't seen that, please do go and watch it so this video has some context for you. Now, to supplement this video, I have actually uploaded the project file for this video to my Patreon. I've had so many requests about people wanting the project files so they can see exactly what I've done to supplement what I'm showing you in this video. Please head over to my Patreon page. Now, you won't just get this, you will get the uploads available for this month, which for this month, October 2020, they include my new Boom Bap album, Baps Volume 3, which contains 14 Boom Bap tracks, as well as the other sample pack, which is a, a Rhodes sample pack that I've put together. It comes in the form of an MPC drum program, but if you don't have an MPC, you can just use the samples in any DAW or hardware sampler of your choice. And there's a couple of other bits on there, which were just legacy bits, which I had to honor for some people who inquired about them. Please note that if you sign up maybe just for one given month, that the links for that month will get deleted at the end of the month. I'll upload something every week in a particular month. Make sure you download it before the end of that month because I will delete those links or zip files or whatever it is that I've uploaded. The reason I've done this is to stop someone just coming in just for one month to grab something, but also being able to access legacy content. That would just simply be unfair to ongoing patrons that want to support me going forward. So hopefully that makes sense. So if you want to check that out, that's www.patreon.com forward slash tube digger. Next month, of course, I'll be uploading four or five more sample packs in November. So it's a really good deal, guys, if you want to sign up on Patreon and become one of my patrons going forward. I won't be showing you how I sequence this track in this video. If you want to see how I've sequenced it, become a patron and then you'll get access to the project file and then you'll be able to see how I've structured this track. So let's break down this track. Let's go to the sample editor and you can see we've literally just got this one sample. There's no other samples in this project. There's no synthesis, no plugins on any of the other tracks. There's key group programs, but again, those key group programs, if we go to the program editor, they're all using that one aim and break snare. So obviously the techniques that we used in another video that I uploaded recently, where I made a seven track album just out of one single second of white noise resampled from tube synth, the techniques are exactly the same. But let me just do a bit more of an in-depth breakdown for this particular track because it's just easier to manage because it's just obviously one track. So let's go to the program editor for the drums and we've got a kick here. So this is the Amon Brother snare. So I was really happy the way that I got this to sit with the bass sounds, which is a really important thing obviously in a genre which is bass heavy like drum and bass and jungle. So. I'll just break down how this has been put together. We've got a low pass six and we've got the envelope fully open at 127. We've got a moderate amount of resonance at 24, but if you take a look at the filter envelope, that's what's doing all the work here. So we need to engage the envelope completely, bring down the cutoff for the snare, increase the resonance. That will put a spike in this particular frequency, which is quite low. And then we're just giving it a bit of a high frequency uh, attack. So if I was to move this forward, you'd hear a bit of a sweep up with that high frequency of the kick drum now. But as we shorten it, it sounds more like a kick drum. So if I was to completely remove the envelope, it would just be a thud which would be okay if you were making boom bap really and you just wanted that kind of muffled thud of a kick drum. You can use that in jungle obviously, but 
for something like jungle and drum and bass it's a bit more electronic i suppose in that regard so it's nice to have a bit of a high frequency aspect to the initial or the attack portion of the sound so if we were to increase the resonance it would just probably get a bit too harsh even though that doesn't sound too bad so you've got a bit of scope there for sculpting it with a resonance the cutoff i've set so it just worked with the rest of the track so we could bring this down so that's a really nice thuddy kick obviously if we just bring the cutoff all the way up to the top we'll restore the original snare from the aim and break but it's really harsh because i've not only just got resonance there it's also got distortion coming from this air tube drive so that's the envelopes we've covered those there's nothing fancy going on with the LFO modulation nothing happening there at all it's a one shot and we've just got this one layer in the samples page the volume is just set to 127 I've not done anything there the effects are obviously doing a lot to this so let's just bring this back down to roughly what it was before that's somewhat similar let's go to the tube drive so I've got a full 100% with the drive here the headroom's really important if we bring the headroom down that's what's giving us the volume initially I only had 23% on the saturation but it becomes cleaner the more saturation you give it, it, it to me it sounds a bit dirty at 0% it sounds just cleaner and more uh, tight, I suppose, with the 100% saturation. Anyway, we've also got a Mother Ducker input here. Now, this is being sent to the pad, I believe. I've actually forgotten. Let's go and check. Um, is it the bass? Oh, it's uh, stabs. So the stab sounds get ducked out because they were a little bit loud when the kicks were coming in and I just wanted those to just be backgrounded slightly let's stick with the drums so also on the entire drum program uh, I've, in fact I'll go back to that let's cover the other drum sounds first so this is so that was the kick drum so it's air tube drive I've shown you the parameters here with the filter and the filter envelope this is the snare so obviously this is just the snare but I've shortened the actual sample with the start and end points just remember that this is exactly the same sample as the kick drum there's no other copies of it or flattened samples it's literally just the same sample being referenced over and over again so I've shortened it here with the start and end points the filter envelope I've mentioned this before if you use some of these higher low pass uh, filters like the low six even the low four but you might have to add a bit of resonance so with the low six and the low eight they give a nice bit of crispy high frequency content on the top of high frequency sound you might think that a high pass filter would be best but that will just bypass low frequencies it won't allow you to really add any high frequencies whereas low pass filters do so I could have add, added some resonance, but it got a bit too strident, which if you don't really know that term, it just just harsh, basically. A bit too crispy for what I wanted. So if we go to the effects, uh, let's just go back. There's nothing going on here. Again, no parameters set. So it is literally just a low pass filter. So there's nothing else going on with the envelopes for the snare or anything. Nothing going on with the tuning, really, other than it's at plus two semitones the kick drum is at plus four let me just go back to that sorry the master is only at minus one so in my previous video where I made the seven tracks using synthesis all these transposition and semitone parameters were all over the place because I was working with very short loops which you'll see later on in this video when I show you how I set the pad sound up so that's when you do need to play a lot with pitching and stuff but these are just set to kind of certain levels that make them sound good because we're dealing with drums I didn't really need to go too far out of the range anyway back to the snare so nothing else with the snare other than it's got a compressor I wanted it to have a nice snap to it so we've got a very high or maximum attack 
setting here, 300 milliseconds. Release time is just below midway. Threshold, halfway, quite a high ratio. You just adjust the output to taste. That really does give it a big boost. And I've got the mix at full. I'm not doing any of this sort of fake parallel compression with that snare. So the Air Enhancer, this is a brilliant effect which I've recently discovered the magic of, particularly with the harmonic setting here. It really brings out some nice, interesting, high frequency content. So that's giving the snare really, really nice crispiness to it. If I take the phase off, it gets even brighter. But then if I move the actual DB setting, it kind of sweeps through it like a band stop filter in some regard. No high gain has been added or low gain. Uh, the frequencies, I've not touched those. I've literally just added the, high, the harmonics here and the phase. I mean, it really doesn't make much difference whether it's on or off. Now, some people might say, why didn't you put the reverb and enhancer before the compressor? Well, as you may know, you can't reorder these and, you know, it, it really didn't make too much difference. But ideally, I would have a compressor at the end of this chain to boost everything that's come before it. So what I'm doing here is enhancing the compressed sound and I've put some reverb on that compressed sound. I think in hindsight, it would have been better to have put the compressor here. Of course, we could go into there and save a preset, delete this from slot one and then put it at slot four, but it really doesn't make much difference. But I think it would be good practice really to have compressors maybe at the end of the chain or at least before an EQ, um, but certainly not maybe before these type of effects. But it doesn't really, you know, I don't want to confuse people. It doesn't really make much difference. Yeah, this is a spring reverb, which is obviously giving us that sort of echo. So it's not too long at all. It's just 1.2 seconds. There's a mix, you know, at 34% and that's it. So on pad three, I've got my ghost snare. So this is obviously exactly the same sample again, but you can see I've moved the start point just a little bit forward. It's at the same pitching as the main snare. And this was just to give me that 16th note ghost snare. So this has got a high pass filter on it because I didn't really want to accentuate the high frequencies, but I did want to roll off the low frequencies to make it a bit of a lighter sound so we got a distinction between the main snare and this ghost snare. Because it was such a short sound, I mean, I could have had it up here, but it was far too high frequency, even with the low resonance. And it just sounded more like a hi-hat. But this is the lovely thing about this technique is that you get so many different types of sounds just by adjusting the filter. You know, you can sweep through from a kick drum up to a snare drum up to a hi-hat just with one single pad. So that's the ghost snare. Again, there's nothing going on in the LFO modulation page. Effects, no effects on that at all. So I was really happy with the ride cymbals. I've got two of them. I've got one on pad eight and one on pad 11. Let's just take a look at these. So semi-tunes is up a bit higher now at seven. We've got the full aim and break snare here. So I've not shortened this at all. It's not looping. That's not what's giving us that tail. It's the reverb, but let's go to the filter first. Really high frequency, high pass or high cutoff on the high pass filter here. Again, a moderate resonance at 26. Let's just play about with the cutoff. Uh, sorry, this is Q-Link. So you can get different flavours of that. But what's giving it that metallic ring, which you wouldn't get if you didn't use it, is the air reverb. If I turn that off, we just get a short, nondescript, boring kind of hi-hat sound. And if we sweep through the cutoff, becomes a bit more tappy. So first of all, I had to find something that sounded good as a hi-hat to give me that top bit. And you can see I've got a tiny bit of envelope here. We could bring out this decay and see what that does. Not an awful lot, but if we have it really fully closed, it gives us that real attacky kind of initial attack portion. 
Again, I've got a very short amplitude envelope. If I was to open that, then the sound would become longer. But you can play about with that, but I found that I needed just the shortest sound possible. I prefer using the envelopes because they're more flexible than just literally shortening the sample. So that's why I've not touched the end point of this sample at all. But the magic is coming from, I know I've got a compressor here. I've done it right this time, compressed the actual reverb. It's the air reverb. Now this is where the magic is. To get things to sound metallic and ringing with a reverb, you need a very, very high time setting. In this case, plus infinite seconds or infinity. But you can see that I've got a room size of 0%. So it gives us a very, it's almost like a delay in that regard. If I was to open up the room size, this would be a huge long tail. And that'll just fade out over a very long period of time. But if you bring that down and have this at its very maximum, and play about with the density and the ambience, you get this metallic ring. And this is something I used to do back in the day when I had a bedroom studio and just one little machine, and I used to mess around with the effects because they were all I had. Um, there's things that I can show you with phasers as well that do some really excellent things to drum frequencies. But that's another video. So these somewhat change the sound density and ambience but I found the settings that I had them at which I settled on were perfect for what I wanted but that's where the magic is 0% room size and the maximum time setting for the reverb and that will give you a nice authentic electronic ride symbol now this other one is just exactly the same pad copied. So let's just take a look at that. And I think I've just got a slightly different filter setting. And it's a little bit longer. Now the reason I did that is that I wanted that kind of classic jungle or drum and bass bell sound that you will hear in the Titan Up Break by Maceo. Um, if you know your breaks, Maceo Parker, it's the live version of Titan Up and it's a very well-known drum break that's been used in tons of jungle records and it's got this very distinct ride cymbal and it just gives the break a drive you know it really picks the break up and gives it energy and that's why i chose to use those and i was really happy that i managed to synthesize that sound because i thought this is going to be really hard and then i just thought of that reverb technique that i used to use but it works well with this track and really drives it in my opinion the last sound is just a simple hi-hat and this is just the basic stuff that I've already shown you. So we've got a very high frequency cutoff setting for the high pass filter. It's a high six, extremely high resonance to give it the brightness. If we brought that resonance down, it doesn't sound too bad without it. We don't really necessarily need it. But I found once the track was playing, when it was in context with the other sounds, you know, it's always a good idea to adjust your sounds on the fly when everything else is playing so you can sort of see how they work with other sounds. So that's just an, another little tip there. Make sure that you process your sounds more often than not alongside the other sounds so they work together. Very short amplitude envelope. So obviously if we extend this, it's gonna be far too long. Uh, that's pretty much it, basic sound there. Uh, oh, we've got a compressor on there and a filter. So I think without the filter, it was letting through too many low frequencies still. So if we take that off, it's a bit too heavy. This just lightens it up. And again, the compressor, similar settings to the kick. Let's show you the effects that are on the entire program. So again, we've got another air tube drive. So I just did these to give the entire break its own sound. It's one thing to process individual sounds, uh, which is fine, and your drum break or your drum pattern or your drum kit will sound fine. But I think adding effects to the entire program to put them all in a similar acoustic space or give them all a similar quality is very important sometimes. You don't always need it. I've got an old Akai compressor here, the old compressor Opto. 
Uh, I don't know why I chose that. I just remember it used to have quite a nice feel to it for particular things. I'm not going to go too heavy into the settings here. Again, this was just a taste to give it a bit of drive. But that compressor really did sort of gel them together. I did put an XY effects on there. I don't need that. That was just to uh, just play about with live. And here again, we see the air enhancer with the full amount or nearly the full amount of harmonics. And this was just to give the break an extra bit of high frequency crunch. And I've also got the low frequencies set very high. So I think this is giving it a bit of a mid-range punch because that low frequency, as you can see, is set to 609 hertz. But you can also see that I've added quite a lot of gain to the entire break because this is on the entire program. It's pushing forward some of the mid-range frequencies. So some of these things aren't really going to apply to you guys. But as I said, if you want the project... You can get it if you sign up to be one of my patrons on Patreon and then you can really have a good dig in there and obviously you can use these sounds for yourself. Move on to the pad sound now which is track two. So we've got an air ensemble. So this is the sound. So let's go to the samples. We can see that it's our aim and break again just with a very short loop point. That's where the real powers coming from this hopefully I didn't just adjust that I did there you go it's fine undo so it's not just one cycle I've had a couple of questions from people saying are you just using single cycles from these waveforms uh, quite often not I'm just taking a portion that works for me so I've not set a semitune value here I think the master page no I've not so I managed to find a portion of this and it seemed to be fine, but we've got a filter envelope here. Again, a bit of filter envelope uh, engaged there with a slow attack time. We've got a low frequency set for the low pass and a bit of resonance. So that just gives me a bit of a sweep. The envelope is quite high, it's 107 for the attack. So you'll hear that slowly sweep up in frequency. So it opens up and gets brighter progressively. Moderate attack time on the amplitude envelope and a pretty much similar release time for the amplitude envelope as we have with the filter, 105. And that just gives us a, a bit of a tail. So if I release my finger quite quickly off it, it still fades out. Uh, so it's just one key group in the entire key group program. It's not mapped across multiple key groups. Another reason why this technique is really good because you don't really hear any loss of quality if you play notes very low. As you can hear, there's no loss of quality or anything that sounds untoward if we'd really drop it low. So I was really happy with this sound. There's just so much scope for sound design with this on its own. So let's go back to the air ensemble. Let's see what happens if we take this off. So this is how it sounds now. This is without the air ensemble effect. So it's still quite a nice sound without it, but you can hear this does give it some stereo width and a particular quality. And that's pretty much it. Let's just take a look at the actual program itself. And we've got a compressor and again, our new friend, the enhancer, which keeps cropping up. So you can see I'm a big fan of this effect. Quite a high gain amount. So let's see what happens if we take that off. So nice and dark and moody, but I wanted to bring out some high frequencies and you can really see how this air enhancer does exactly that. Let's now go to the stabs. This is a similar program to the one that I've just shown you with the strings or the pad sound. But all I've done here is give it quite a short uh, release time for both the amplitude envelope and the filter envelope and to give it that real kind of stabby sound I mean we've got some distortion here just to boost it up a bit and saturate it and dirty it up a bit let's go back to the program editor let's look at the sample it's a very short loop again and I didn't play about with the semi-tunes here uh, it's very low semi-tune value on this so again it 
it's just the, t- the case that you're designing a sound that doesn't really exist. It's a unique sound, and it f- forces you to have to play around with all the parameters that we've got available in the MPC. So I managed to get this sound to sit right for this key group program just by playing around. Obviously, I'm winging it here. I'm finding a short loop that's going to have a particular pitch. Then I'm going to have to offset that. There's no pan velocity on any of the sounds in this entire project. Nothing fancy going on there. It's just all in the filters, the effects and the samples and the tuning. Uh, so this one, um, quite a low cutoff with the high pass filter, but we've got an envelope amount here just to give it a little bit of a sweep up. It's really not that noticeable. Uh, some resonance there. Uh, air distortion which I showed you let's go to the actual program now this is where the mother ducker is so the kick drum just ducks this down uh, just a little bit not too much and it's got an air filter just to take off some of the high frequencies I think if I was to bring this up it would be a bit too harsh yeah I think I rolled that off there and I do think I automate that just before the drums come in maybe but yeah nothing uh that interesting going on here it, it was just to adjust the sound to make it sound uh, sit right in the mix so not all of these are you know to give the sound a particular effect a lot of the time i'm using these effects to make the sound sit right in context with the other sounds that are in the track so don't always think of these effects as something to give you an interesting sound uh they are very much all of them even if it is like a special effect, you know, like a phaser or a flanger, as I showed you with the reverb, that's allowed me to make a ride cymbal. So it actually becomes a utility in that sense. Now let's check out the main bass sound. Now, this is a funny one. This is something that happens quite a lot. If you muck about with resonance and filters and uh, effects, particularly things like distortion and harmonics, you get some really weird tones if you move too far out of the range. So we're only up here, maybe an octave away from this note. But it's got none of the same qualities as this low note. You can hear a tuned note coming down as we move down the pads. But these have got really strange quality to them, these top pads. So it's nice that we can play about with those and only get that real heavy bass sound at the bottom here. Let's have a look how that's set up. Samples page, again, a really short loop, one that's very similar to the stab. In fact, I might have even copied this over and then just adjusted some different parameters. That looks pretty much like the same loop section I used for the stab. It may well be because it's got a similar semi-tuning value set here. The master, I've not touched that. I'm not too sure why I've got the polyphony set to two, but normally I'd have my bass sound set to monophonic. So the filter envelope on this, we've now got a band pass. So that's not a filter that I use too regularly, but it worked really well for this. Let's see what happens if we adjust the cutoff. <laughs> So you get some really nice, interesting, springy, rubbery kind of things. Quite a high resonance, nearly at 50%. A little bit of an envelope. So you can play about with that until your heart's content to give yourself different feelings with this. Not feelings inside, like, oh, oh that's, that bass sounds lovely. Or, oh, that reminds me of my grandma. Feelings, I mean, like, in like a uh, different f- feel to the sound. Yeah. Um, let's go to the effects. So distortion obviously playing a big part in this. Very high drive, output 100%, mode is set to hard. There's not an awful lot of difference in the sound if we change the pre-shape and the threshold. For this particular sound there's not, but quite often these parameters will have a dramatic effect on the distortion uh, quality uh, if you play about with those. But obviously each situation is different and um, I've got other stuff going on here with the filters. It's really going to change uh, depending on what you've done. So in here with the enhancer, again, we've got that phase switched on, the harmonics, 
So let's just bring that down. Just to give it that aggressive growl on the top. And then we've got a filter sweep to sweep all of that. So yeah, that filter sweep was just to give it a bit of movement really. So yeah, a really nice bass sound. Again, just using that classic technique of a very short loop, you know, particular filter for the resonance. Now with a band pass six, what it's doing, it's bypassing all the high frequencies there and the high resonance. You're putting a spike in the frequency of where the cutoff is settled on. So let's go to this thing that I've called int bass. I was really happy with this bass. So I really love that aggressive growl and the way it just springs up and you've got that whop kind of sound. Almost like a voice. And it gave this track, you know, that real dark edge, which I was looking for. So again, it's just a copy of the first bass sound, but now I've got a lot higher envelope and I've increased the uh, attack time here to give it that kind of wob sort of sound. If we move that forward, takes ages to come up nothing that fancy going on with the amplitude envelope there's no attack being applied there I've just slightly rolled off the release just so we don't get a click the effects so again air distortion I think these are exactly the same I've not done anything to them other than what I had going on in the initial bass sound. I might have just adjusted some high frequencies here and there just to give it a slightly more aggressive feel. But most of the difference in this sound and the main bass sound is because of the filter envelope. Uh, let's just go to the track mixer. So on the main bass, just going back to that, sorry, I didn't show you what effects I've got. There aren't any. Again, on this one, it's just a compressor just to give it a bit of punch. And that's it. So that is the track broken down. One aim and break snare and they're all the processes that I used. If you do want this project, you can become a patron of mine on my Patreon. That's www.patreon.com forward slash tube digger. I don't mind if you just sign up for a month just so you can grab this, but it will only be available until the end of October 2020. Thereafter, it will be gone. So if anyone wants this project, you can go and sign up and be a patron on my Patreon. As said, if you do support me ongoing, every month you will get a new sample pack each week within that month. Make sure you download the content before the end of the month because it will be gone and there will be a new load of content for the next month. I've done this to stop people just coming in for one month and grabbing all of my legacy content, which wouldn't be fair to ongoing patrons. If you want private lessons with myself, please contact me at tubedigger at gmail.com. Please leave any comments and questions below, and I will see you on the next one. This is Tube Digger, and I'm out.